Good day. Thanks for joining me for an episode of Atari 8-Bit Gameplay. Um, I've got queued up here and ready to go. The game Grid Runner by Jeff Minter and his company Lamasoft Software from 1983. Now, this is an interesting game that uh, Jeff has a long history with and I think this is the earliest incarnation of that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is a no, maybe I am mistaken. I was going to say this is a character mode game, which I might need to pay some attention to in order to play. But now that I'm now that I'm thinking about that, I'm not sure whether that's true or not. Um, you control this ship. You can shoot. So there's very clearly a centipede inspiration here. But um, the actual gameplay is quite different than centipede, other than the obvious. Um, centipede-like thing uh, progressing down the grid towards you. Beyond that though, you've got these, uh, I don't know what to call them, laser cannons that go, that scan uh, left to right and top to bottom and uh, will do you in just as happy, they're just as happy to do you in as, as, as anything. I'm not even sure what triggers that. Maybe if you're, it seems like their fire is a little bit random. Um, now, I believe, or maybe it's just a time thing, the firing. That might that might be the case, actually. So I, I think what's going on is when the the one that shoots horizontally fires and it meets the uh, the laser or grid electrification of the other one, it um, creates a, a thing at the intersection which. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it, maybe a mine or something. They, they grow gradually and evolve and then they release a projectile downwards. Now there may be more to that in the later levels if I can even get past, here we go. Grid area two, but that's what they do in level one. So here we go. As with all Jeff Minter games, you've got some very interesting sound effects. Um, that's one of the key things that, that he always has in his game is, is interesting sounds and lots and lots of flashing lights and uh, exploding things and wow that was <laughs> that was pretty poor and on my part um, yeah you know I think that oh, sorry I'm just watching the firing it might just be a timed thing actually which, if that's the case, you should be able to get the rhythm of that and avoid getting electrified, unlike what I just did there. Now you can also choose a level to start in up to, I don't know what level, let's find out. 20, 21, 22, 26, 28, 31, 31. Okay, so that seems to be the highest. Oh, you can't go down again. Hmm. Well, the number scrolls pretty quickly. I was going to just restart on level two, which is where I had uh, where I had failed there in the last game. Pulsating, pulsating visual effects, although kind of monochromatic. Um, so you get points for taking out those mine elements. You get points for taking out the centipede, I guess. I, it's probably not what it's called, but. I don't know what it is called, unless that's the grid runner, maybe. Not sure if you're the grid runner or if the. Oh. Also, not clear on what happens when the. when uh, portions of that centipede run off the bottom of the screen there. Okay, don't chase the uh, electrification or you're gonna get electrified. Let that be a lesson to all of you. Don't do that. Oh, wow. So you're seeing a, a display of talent and raw skill that uh, has rarely been seen in the realm of video gameplay, I have to tell you. So you should be marveling at this, uh, this, this just astonishing play that you're witnessing. Why am I not? Oh, you're just you're not able to fire up that far. Interesting. 
So let's see if I can pay attention and see what happens when the uh, the things run off the bottom of the screen there, which a couple of them are about to do. Oh, they re-enter higher up. Okay, interesting. So that's also important to know, so that you can get out of their way. And uh, all right, there's lots of room for skill here, which is another hallmark of Jeff's games. Yeah skill like you're not actually seeing me exhibit but um, there's things that if you pay attention to you can sort of have a grasp of what's going on and develop a, a feel for the timing of things and uh, do better so I've learned a couple things on my first two runs at it let's see if I can put together a better game here gotten hit by one of those exploding bomby things that time. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Unfortunately you have to uh, start over with a new a new uh, enemy each time, a new centipede. Maybe I'll just stick with the term centipede for now. Um, as I <laughs> as I started to say at one point I I keep getting my train of thought derailed by playing the game. Um, Jeff has a long history with, with his game, Grid Runner. He's done versions of it and sequels to it for years and years and years. Um, there was a really good, in my opinion, Android version that he put out, uh, oh, I don't know how long ago now, a while, quite a while back, but I quite enjoyed that. I think it was even ported to iOS at one point, but um, the whole, the constraints of the iOS ecosystem and the focus on microtransactions and things Jeff really didn't he expressed a, a dislike for all of that and um, what it ultimately meant was that the iOS platform and probably Android for that matter wasn't wasn't really viable for the way he wanted to have his work sold and produced um, so I think he shifted his focus to a little bit of PlayStation PlayStation Vita um, PC in the form of uh, Windows games on Steam. Uh, hopefully he's doing all right these days. A little hard to know. Um, he's not a, an entirely private person, but um, I haven't seen any writing or anything from him recently. Good, good area four. Oh, here I was blathering away and I, and actually getting a couple of grids further in. I got through two and three. No, two and three. And now it looks like if I don't pay a little more attention, I'm going to very rapidly lose out on grid 4 here. So no new gameplay elements, I don't think, although things have, have I think, sped up a little bit. I think the uh, grid creature, grid runner, centipede creature is moving a little more quickly. The firing, the... Uh, the repeat pattern of the of the firing of the laser and the cross shot has certainly increased in tempo. And uh, yeah, oh lord. Okay, don't park yourself there. Maybe just don't move over that far. How about that? No, oh, you just stay right there. So you don't seem to be able to shoot up to the top row of the grid. Which um, I had noticed earlier. Okay, get out of the way. All right, you know this game. As simplistic as the visuals are in some ways, um, it does very. It does have a real just give it one more try quality, which is uh, always a lot of fun. I'm gonna pop on to level five, which is one further than I got to playing legitimately and. Uh, uh, well, not it's not not illegitimate, but you know what I mean. Without getting there on my own steam from the beginning, I always do like the ability to select the level because then you can choose your you can customize your gameplay experience a little bit, and you know it, it prevents you from having to play through the uh, early levels of a game that you've already more or less mastered, which can be pretty tedious when you just want to really see what happens later on. I'll just maybe spend a moment thinking about the tempo of the firing here. 
yeah, it's definitely picking up level by level. Um, and things are moving more quickly. So, simplistic gameplay, but there's some comp there is a... Uh, there's a bit of hidden depth to it, in that if you pay attention to what's going on, there's you can learn things and, and adapt your game, your style of play to that to get better. And um, got him entering grid seven. Mind melting color or uh, brightness pulsation there. That, uh, that sort of effect is something that Jeff got a lot more sophisticated with over the years. And, uh, some people don't really care for it. Um, I do enjoy it, um, for the most part. There are times when it's a little hard on the, eye, the eyeballs, a little hard on the brain from time to time, but, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of Jeff Minter games over the years that I consider just to be so playable and so fun, so much depth. Um, you know, he's revisited this sort of you can call this a centipede genre game, which it obviously is, but um, especially with later incarnations, he 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 really made it his own game, and and the the centipede influence was you know it's still obviously an inspiration, but it's very much not the the main thrust of the gameplay. It's it's much more of a shooter than Centipede ever was, with some very interesting mechanisms and and gameplay elements. All right. Well, I uh, maybe I'll finish off this game. I'm sure, you'll all be delighted to watch me play through this level, or as far as I can get. And uh, that'll be it, I think, for this one. If I come across as a Lamasoft and Jeff Minter fanboy, that's because I am, really. I've uh, followed his work and his writings for quite a few years. Um, he used to write for one of the Atari ST magazines, ST format, I want to say. He had a column in there, which uh, was when I really sort of became aware. It's not that I wasn't aware of him before. Like, I had played games like this, Grid Runner, and Hover Bover and, and I'm sure others on the Atari. Um, Attack of the Mutant Camels, I want to say. The one where you, it's kind of like, uh, it's basically the Star Wars game, uh, Empire Strikes Back, but with camels, or llamas, camels, I think. Um, again, with his own spin on it, though. Uh, so I was aware of Lamasoft and, and, and I had seen Jeff's name around, but it was only through his columns in that Atari magazine that uh, I ought to get I got to, I got to have a sense of you know him as an individual, some of his thoughts on gameplay and philosophy of making games. Um, there was uh, he was one of the early or if not the earliest experimenter with shareware. Um, I don't think it was called that back then, but I do remember, um, you know, getting a getting a disc of software which was uh, Lamatron. Lamatron, I forget. There, I think there was a number involved. I have to look that up on the ST. And as part of the game, it basically said, you know, look, if you enjoy this game, consider sending a few pounds to uh, me, Jeff Minter, at this address. And, um, now, I didn't do that, um, living in Canada and not really having any money at the time either. I was a, a university student. I mean, I guess I could have had uh, a couple of less beers and sent Jeff a few bucks. It's, it's, I kind of regret not doing that in a way. But I've bought quite a few of his games over the years since that time in my life when I did have a little more money. So... Hopefully I've evened that score a fair bit. In any case, um, I think that's going to do it for Grid Runner. Thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.